Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Molly tells Christina at the cemetery that she is the reason her lovely, helpless baby is buried here. Molly screams that Christina went to Ava's room to start a fight, but she wants to blame Ava. When TJ tries to step in and warn Molly not to do it today, Molly accuses Christina of being self-centered and selfish. Molly snaps at her mother for standing up for Christina just in time as Alexis begs her to stop. She is enraged that Christina is never forced to accept blame or consequences for her actions. Molly asks her mother if it explains why she was so keen to regain her legal license in order to assist Christina in snatching her child. Alexis sobs uncontrollably. Sam informs Molly that while they are aware of her grief, it isn't helping. Molly takes out the affidavit she discovered in her mother's briefcase, which was written for Christina. She queries if her mother intended to file it prior to the birth or to take the child out of her arms and give it to Christina afterwards. Molly was aware that Christina would not give her her child. No, Christina wasn't, she acknowledges. Christina sobs, saying the infant was raised by her and was a part of her. Molly exclaims, she killed her. Molly, according to Christina, cannot take away from her the eight months that she was her mother. Molly claims that mothers shield their offspring from harm and that she killed her kid out of selfishness. Christina sobs, declaring her love for her to be greater than everything. Molly becomes enraged at not understanding what love is. She yells at Christina to acknowledge that she killed her child and claims that's why her daughter died. Tearful, Christina falls on the floor. Because Molly is mistaken and because Christina loves her child, she sobs. TJ asks Christina how she's doing and whether she's in any pain. While everything is going on, Molly thinks back to her conversation with Christina about being the surrogate and Alexis's caution that there would be no formal contract claiming the kid as Molly's. She has flashbacks to further disputes and arguments she had with her sister regarding the kid. Molly refuses to leave without TJ, even though Rick says they should get her home. TJ approaches Molly, shakes her hand, and they walk away. While Alexis holds Christina, Sam gives Rick a shady glance and Christina keeps crying. Chase phones Brooklyn at the PCPD to inquire about the progress of her mother's portion. She tells him she has to leave home and heart because Myrna, the caller, is still criticizing Loy's accent live. When Dante arrives on the set, he tells Maxie that Lulu has been transferred to General Hospital. Dante tells that she was sent there to better manage her requirements after experiencing a setback. Though he wished he had more details, he assumed she would be curious. Maxie gives him thanks. Once again on camera, Haven informs Myrna, the caller, that she was brought up to understand that critiquing someone's speech pattern is impolite. Haven informs the crowd that everyone is encouraged to speak up at home and heart and to let deception assist them with their skin. The broadcast is carried on by Haven and Lois. Pearl, one of Haven's newest hosts, is introduced. In the following part, Pearl introduces a new range of vegan handbags that will be offered. Later, Haven tells Lois that she is a natural and that she was amazing. Brooklyn reports that her sales for the quarter were the highest, and the stats are excellent. Tracy even informs Lois that she performed admirably. In private, Lois asks her daughter if her accent is too much to take. She was a hit, Brooklyn assures her, and the figures don't lie. Haven and Tracy accompany them. Haven and social media both concur that Lois was a success. Haven wants to schedule her next event and turn this into a recurring event. Tracy advises that they should go home and stop stroking Lois' ego. To schedule their next appearance, Tracy says they'll give each other a call. When Laura gets to the hospital, Liz tends to Lulu. How's her daughter doing? She asks. After they leave, Liz says that although Lulu is stable, her liver is slowly failing. They are doing testing, but they have no idea why this is occurring. Liz claims she's making every effort to ensure her comfort. 
The nurse gives her the reassurance that Lulu is in capable hands and that everything will work out for her. Laura is aware of the general consensus regarding the situation, which is that it is hopeless and she should release her daughter. She is aware that Lulu is a warrior, though, and they must give her every chance to return to them. After getting to the hospital, Maxie talks to Liz about Lulu. Liz encourages her to sit down and chat with her buddy and shares with her all she knows about Lulu. Chase inquires about the burial when Dante arrives back at the station. Nothing can be said or done to help anyone, according to Dante, and it was a complete chaos. Why isn't he with his family today? Chase wonders. Dante says he needs to immerse himself in his work because he received some unexpected news. Chase extends his willingness to hear. Lulu, according to Dante, has been admitted to General Hospital and is now in terrible condition. When Chase asks if Rocco is aware, Dante responds that he is. Since Chase is aware that Lulu might be slipping away, she asks Dante how he's doing. Dante is unsure of his feelings and whether he is even entitled to feel anything at all. He adores Sam and the life and family that they have built together. Chase is aware of how wonderful he and Sam are, but he can also feel complex emotions for Lulu because she was his wife and they have a child together. According to Dante, she was moving on with her life after their divorce at the time of the accident. He doubts that she is dreaming of him while she lies in that bed. Ruined Maxi sits with Lulu at the hospital while she does her nails. She has faith that Lulu will overcome this because so many people depend on her. Dante is included, according to Maxi. Since Dante was the one who informed her that Lulu had been relocated here, she believes he still has feelings for her. She acknowledges that she never informed Dante that Lulu would tell him that she still adored him and wished for his return. It wouldn't be fair to Dante in her opinion, and he need to go on. She informs Lulu that Dante is among them and that it is now time for her to return. Maxi says this and right after Dante enters. In the meantime, Laura and Liz speak. She claims that Lucky told her about Lulu's aplastic anemia when she was a child and how resilient she had been at the time. This was years ago. Lulu needs that strength again, she adds. Laura wishes she knew Lucky's location so she could bring him home since she misses him. Somewhere, a man gets tossed into a cell. He's sitting on a stool with a bag over his head, his hands and legs bound. Later on, we see that it's lucky as he gets pinned against the wall and has his hood taken off. Curtis, Portia, Marshall, Stella, Jordan, and Curtis return to their home. When Molly's father and her family are at odds, Portia brings it up, Stella and Marshall excuse themselves to get dinner. Jordan clarifies that Rick operates in a grey area and isn't well-liked in this community. She reveals that he would rather avoid Port Charles because he is no longer in contact with Sonny and doesn't get along with Alexis. It's evident that Molly adores Rick, as Curtis says, and he's still her father. Molly apologizes to TJ on the porch for what transpired today. She made it into something horrible when it should have been about healing and burying Irene. TJ claims that she is not required to apologize and that occasionally their feelings are too strong to control. They will always be Irene's parents and he is aware of how she feels. They embrace after he assures them that they will work through their sadness together. Going back inside, Marshall and Stella talk about TJ, who, according to Marshall, is going to need them more than ever. Jordan is informed by TJ that Christina would never become pregnant with their child. Alexis was assisting her, and she had an affidavit to keep the baby. Curtis says they understand, even though Portia detests having to go to the hospital. Portia leaves after saying hello to Rick when he arrives at their door. He is told to settle in by Portia. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, Please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.